Greetings, everyone. Um, so last week we did discuss a little bit about um, calculating mid lot, uh, especially I know people get confused when they're crossing the um, going from one sector to the other, north to south, south to north. Uh, and I hope we, because uh, I left the video there as well. So please don't get too excited and quickly add the two together and divide by two and think you, you've gotten the mid lots. No, that will work if you're in the same hemisphere. So today I want to talk a bit about limiting latitude. Um, I remember during my SQA exams, that's something 2012, um, when we came out of the exams, you know, when people start calling and finding out what did you get in your answer number 2A or answer 2B, or what did you do in this particular question? You know, I and I remember so well, we had a um, composite great circle question. Uh, with a limiting latitude, you know, that's what makes it composite. Uh, and what I mean is this, you start from uh, point A, you're going to B. Now, please, the most important thing in any question is for you to read the question, even before you start to attempt it. Because if you read the uh, first part of the question and start working with that, by the time you get to the second part or third part of the question, they might have included something that you needed to work in your first question, in your first part that you've already done. And that's a waste of time. You might not be able to recover if you go into something like that. So read this question very well. This particular question, it's a great circle, very simple great circle. However, reading towards the end, uh, the, uh, the question requires us to stop in a particular island you know, and um, I think do something in a particular place in a limit of a latitude, you know, and say, don't enter this latitude. So the idea was you, we are going to do great circle to a particular point, then do plain sailing to another point, then continue another great circle. So it once you do one full, you know, great circle calculation is not something that it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's not difficult but it's time consuming now if you do one great circle all the way and realize you're supposed to do composite you don't have enough time anymore during your exams to 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 recover and people fail that particular exams and people still fail that so what is what are limiting latitude limiting latitude can be as a result of your um load line marks that's the day that question was asked i told the person to ask the question to Draw me the Plimson line or the load line mark. So if you are loaded and um, by law, you shouldn't be overloaded, right? And you have to go through uh, a, a sector that will make you sink below your load marks, um, you, you are not allowed to go into. So with that, you might stay at the peripheral of that latitude. And you know whatever um, method of sailing you got to that point, you will stay on there with probably with plain sailing or parallel plain sailing, most likely. Then once you are, you've passed a particular area, they continue under great circle. Now, limiting latitude could be as a result of um, insurance for security. I know that some, some ships, when they are navigating and coming towards West Africa, you know, there's a particular point in which once you get there, you have to inform your office so that they can inform the insurance and all that. Now, sometimes, your office don't want you to enter that point because they are not insured for security. Somali area, the West Africa, uh, uh, Boni, some parts, the Bight of Boni or something, and you know, and different parts of the world like that. So you say, don't go into this is the latitude you should stay. That's a limited latitude. Sometimes you want to do a great circle calculation, and the point you are going through is going to go through land, for example, a small island. I call it the Love Island in the diagram I showed last time. Of course, you cannot go through land. You have to stop at the safe place and navigate through the obstruction and continue a great circle. That's another point of limiting latitude. So it's, it's, the, it's a big grammar, but look at it and don't cram it. Understand the question. What is the obstruction? Don't just jump into it. X. Understand the question very well before you start calculating it. So great circle, composite great circles means you're doing uh, two great circles and something in between basically so you know it's a combined combination of great circles so if you draw these questions out you're going from point a to point b there's an obstruction somewhere you find that or there is a reason why you don't have to go into it you know that that's your like your limiting latitude some of times it will advise you 
that, okay, before you can go into a particular region, you need to burn some bunker or you need to do, you know, you need to float. And the only way you can float is to burn some bunker. So fuel burning, they call it fuel burning. So that means when you get to a particular place, you consider on a plane sailing or parallel sailing or whatever on for the amount of bunker. So if you have to burn to, um, maybe 50 cubes, before you can, you're allowed to get into that region, you have to sail, you know, at that latitude for, and if you burn 20, if you burn 25 cube per day, that means you have to stay for two days on that latitude. Once you are fine, then you can proceed inside, inside the airport and all that. So those things are real life questions that come up and, you know, and it's, it's something that is practical as well. So don't get uh, too excited about big names or big grammar they give to these things. They break it down as much as possible and you'll be able to tackle it. So get your plane sailing um, formulas, know them. Parallel sailing, know them. Great circle, know them. And, you know, and all this and all that, okay? And I also have to add now, in most of the questions, especially people sitting at SQA, in your navigation, they now start asking rules of the road. They started doing that anyway. So prepare for rules of the road. They can actually ask you, you know, rule this, rule two in, in, in an SQA navigation question. All right. So thank you very much for that. If I know I explained it in the group in words, but you know, like I said, somebody OB went to meet Ngozi, you know, but he has to branch somewhere, buy flower, you know. But again, some people will understand it in by typing. And so people will understand it if they're explained. So sorry, I don't have a whiteboard where I am to be able to explain it better, but I hope you can imagine what I've said. And it's important, read the question before you start um, answering. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Um, does anybody have any question as regards to, to that before we go ahead? So we understand limited latitude. Yeah. All right, JJ, you want to ask a question? Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I want to ask a question. Though I I participate partially in the last um and this, you know, you may mention of um finding the mean latitude. You know, normally we just um plus the two latitude together and divide it by two. Uh, so please, uh, is there any direct um, um, formula in finding uh, mid latitude? Is there any direct formula? You know, I don't know. Okay, okay, JJ, thanks for the question. So, um, now the, if you're trying to look for a direct formula, I, I said something about last time. I don't really like cram people cramming because if you forget one small thing in what you've crammed, you will be sweating the exam all, even if there's AC, even in winter. You know, you'll be sweating. So it's better to understand it. Now, if you are in the north hemisphere, going from point A to point B in the north hemisphere, and you need to get the mid latitude because you are in the same hemisphere, it will make sense for you to add it together and divide by two, right? Mean is the summation divided by the number, you know? So if you have four points and you want to find the mean, yeah, center, sort of something like that. Now, the tricky but, uh, part right, is where you're going from um, from north to south or south to north. So if you have, do you have, a pen, you have a pen and paper there, JJ? Yes, I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing. I'm so writing, for sir. example, let me pick a point. So you have uh, 20 degrees uh, north, just a quick example, 20 degrees north, and you are coming mm -hmm. to uh 15 degrees south what will be your mid latitude at that point okay now if you if you had it together and divide by two so the, that's 20 plus 15 is 35 divide 35 by 2 is 17.5 right if you write your answer yes. is 17.5 yes sir because 17.5 what? 17.5 is not the mid latitude of those two points, okay? So what I recommend is that if you draw, if you draw a line, um, you draw your equator at zero, you draw the 20 degrees okay. north above the equator, and you draw the 15 degrees south below okay. the equator, 
you will see that, yes, there's a 35 degrees difference between them. Right? Yes. Now, if you div yes, if, where is the what is the mid going to be? So if you add it together and if you divide that by two, it will be 17.5, as I said. Now, if you deduct 17.5 from 20 yes. from the north, where you are coming from, you will get a, like a 2.5 degrees, right? So 2.5 degrees north will be your mid latitude. Yes, yes. You understand what I mean? So that will be your mid latitude, 2.5 degrees north will be your 2.5 degrees north. Yes. From 20 degrees oh. north and 15 degrees south. Your mid, where is your mid latitude going to be? If you add it together and divide by two, you get 17.5, right? Now take 17.5 away from where you're coming yes, from. Yes. Yeah, from the 20. Come down from 20. Come yeah, down. That it will remain 2.5. Exactly. So that's your mid latitude. That's the that's the mid. That's the middle. 2.5 degrees north. Now let me let me prove it for you. Let's walk the other way around. That 2.5 remaining, add it okay, to the yeah, 15. Yeah, I, got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. You get it, right? Now it is very simple, but a lot I of people, it. I got it. A lot of people I got it. The by by, by exactly. drawing the exactly. So you don't need to cram it. You don't the mistake people make is they just say, oh, meat, add it together and divide by two. Then now, because it's not and south, they start thinking, what am I going to name it? It becomes tricky. So for me, the way I work it out, I draw it. It takes another one minute to draw it. Then I, you know, visually, you know that. You know, okay. So guys, uh, that's a little example. Maybe another time we can look at navigation. You know, we take all the navigation tricky questions. People get confused, and I will take that as a class. Okay. But do you do we all do we understand it now, JJ? Do you understand it, right? I got it loud and clear and clear and clear. So what I have what I have to do is for draw my this thing and, and pull my notes out and draw, you know, from there I can pick it. Very, yeah. very clear now, sir. You've just Thank solved you the problem. Much. And so you Thank save your life much. now. Thank you. All right. Then. Oh, Captain Messiah, well, sorry we've taken a little bit from your class. Eh? No, it's it's really fine. And I was really able to get the simple trick. Um <laughs> I hope um JJ, no, no, feel free if you have more questions. Um, honestly, it's 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 why we are here to learn more. Um, does anybody have any other question on that regarding limiting latitude? All right, with that, we just dive straight to another sweet, um, interesting topic uh, today, which is um what are tied to a general average. And I'm sure one or two of us, I mean, we might have heard of general average um, once in a while. If you've not heard of it, it was it's something that will come out in our maritime law, especially there will be after today's discussion, I mean, after today's class, there will be discussion on what kind of, I mean, should we be expecting a general average situation in the Suez Canal with Evergreen one um, on the, in Egypt? So does anybody know, understand what general average is? Have you heard of the term general average? Okay, JJ, I'm nodding your head. Okay, yes, sir. I've heard about the word general average and um, it has to do with uh, um, maritime law. I mean, it's a term that is being used in um, maritime law. Uh, simply put in the layman's term, I say general average is um, um, sharing, sharing responsibility or responsibility of loss among parties. It can be within um, two or three vessels in case of collision or in case of any accident, just sharing of loss, not putting the whole responsibility of loss to a single party. Thank you, sir. Mm, that's, uh, thanks, that, that's really quite exploratory. I'm just gonna share my screen now um, 
for everybody to see so we can all follow up and we take notes in case I'm moving um, very fast. So just like JJ said, I me, mean, I term general average to be a legal principle, a legal principle of you know maritime law, which applies to all seagoing ventures. I mean, which applies in a seagoing venture, proportional share of, of any partial loss. So for instance, if there is a partial loss on a vessel, it goes proportionally to everybody and it doesn't, one person doesn't suffer that loss. As long as the loss is resulting from one, a voluntary act, two, is reasonable, three, is extraordinary, um, an extraordinary sacrifice or maybe of part of the ship or part of the cargo or some of the cargo in order to save save that maritime venture. And then the most important one, it must happen in what I call peril or an emergency. So for in summary of what I just said, for general average to take place, number one, that ship must be in peril. And when I mean peril, I mean, there must be an emergency for that partial loss. So for instance, if I, not me, <laughs> if a captain, uh, middle of the night, just seeing my, cap, my container, let's okay, let me say I'm the, I'm, I have a container on so, 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 so vessel. And the captain just jettisoned the cargo for no just reason. It doesn't qualify for general average. There was no peril, there was no emergency. But if there was an emergency, which we will even start going into, and for number one, there was an emergency, excessive list, we talked about excessive list the other day and low on um, when we were dealing with emergencies. So if there was an excessive list, Oh, oh, Captain, we really need to save this vessel from going, from tumbling, from sinking. Cargo in Cargo Hold 5 needs to go overboard or else the whole adventure or the whole maritime venture goes overboard. Then the Captain gives an order to let go that container. The owner of that container will cry. So this is where everybody now comes in to compensate him proportionally. And I repeat, proportionally. So meaning if I'm just transporting this book and somebody is transporting Rolls Royce, I'm just giving an example. I'm not going to pay the same money on with the person transporting Rolls Royce. And that's where there's, um, there are professionals called the general average adjuster comes into play. So a general average adjuster comes into play, qualifies that this partial loss that is that has happened in this maritime venture qualifies for an average general average to be declared. And then it proportionally shares this loss with everyone. So like I said, one, which are the five major uh, factors they put into place. Like I said, the vessel must be in peril. It must be in distress. There must be an emergency. There must be, there must be something. There must be an extraordinary situation. Then two, the act must be voluntary. For it to qualify for a general average, it must be voluntary. And from the slide here, you can see voluntary and what intentional. It must be an intentional act. So for instance, even if there was fire and something mistakenly fell overboard, mistakenly, it doesn't qualify for a general average. Three, it must be reasonable. I gave a first example of a ship listing to starboard side. Captain, we need to jettison the cargo on cargo hold number three. And that will bring this vessel upright quickly to save the vessel. And what the captain said is, jettison 
cargo in cargo number three, four, five, six, seven. You should just see everything remaining the one at the back. I mean, the one that do us this step. Everybody we ask, was that a reasonable decision? Why did you take that decision? There are other instances which we'll go into today, and we will be able to talk to ourselves this evening if general average qualifies it or it doesn't qualify it. So we have a full understanding. But two, the captain must make a reasonable decision. The captain must make a reasonable decision when before you to qualify for a general average, or else it's no more qualified. Then three, I started by saying one, it must be in peril. Two, it must be a voluntary action. Three, it must be a reasonable action. Therefore, it must be for the common safety of others. And when I mean common safety of others, I am going back again to my example. The reason you are just using that cargo is so that the vessel will come upright. The vessel comes upright, the old maritime adventure, the sea adventure can still continue, or else this vessel goes overboard. Now let's take another instance. The only uh, a cargo is affected, and there is nothing in that cargo that can destroy the maritime adventure or can do anything to the vessel or can do anything to other cargo. And it goes down the drain. You take a voluntary action only on that cargo. Let's say, let's say for instance, a dangerous good cargo. A dangerous good cargo is leaking, but it's concealed in that, in that container. And for one reason or the other, by the EMS, the captain makes um, an emergency procedure only on that container. And there's nothing on that container that will affect every part of the other vessels. The cargo, the ship, I mean, the shippers or the general average adjuster cannot declare a general average on that because there is nothing that connects that, that particular cargo with every other cargo, whether you take an intentional action. So, what am I saying? It must be for the safety of the whole ship. All of us, we have come together to put our cargo on these vessels, both the ship owner, both the shippers, every, every stakeholder, not major stakeholder, minor and major stakeholder on the vessel as a say inside. So whatever happens to cargo Mr. A, and we affect cargo of everybody, then can be declared as a general average. But whatever happens to cargo A, that will not, whether it's jettisoning or it's not jettisoning, that does not have anything to do with all that, does not have anything to do with safety of other vessels, then that is where an argument like, oh, it is not a general average. Then four, I mean five, which is the last one. It must be an extraordinary act. It must not be just a normal act that we do um, every day. It must be something that only happens once, um, once in a while. So with that, those are the five major aspects that we use in determining a general average in the maritime law on its own. Now let's look at these examples that I've put here. And forgive me to say, I will call everyone on this group one by one. Starting from the first example, damages to ship's anchor and or cables while attempting to refloat a stranded vessel. Can we say that is a general average or no? Starting with JJ. Okay, so um, from the um, the the, the uh, um, this thing you you lay down here that qualifies um is on to be general average. From the first example you put there, I don't think that can be declared as a general average because it's, it's a ship anchor and cable. You are not helping another person. It's your own vessel. Mm. Does anybody have a different opinion? Uh, wait, so let me think well though. But why other can go and let me be thinking of it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, uh, Lima November. Um hi sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, yeah. sir. 
Yeah, from your explanation, you said it has to be intentional and it has to be during emergency. So when a vessel is already stranded, we are attempting to refloat. So I think that's an emergency. So a general average should apply. Mm. A general average should apply. Um, that's because it's, it's in a, just because it's in an emergency. Uh, attempting to refuse. Okay. Well, we are still attempting to refloat. That means it has been stranded already. Yeah, yeah. So if we don't refloat it, nice. everything else will get damaged. Mm. That's 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 good. That's a valid point. It's it's to me, um, it's still these are things that comes up in court of law, to be honest. Um, is the general average not a general average? But damages to the ship anchors and to the ship cables while you are trying to refloat a stranded vessel that has been stranded. Um, there are other people in the vessels as well. So this is an extraordinary action. This is an action that came out of an emergency. This is also an action that you're purposely even trying to use anchor cable to do everything to refloat the vessel. This reasonable, it now depends. What, that is where the debate comes in. Is it something that is reasonable for an action? What action, what were they doing before this anchor um, you know, got damaged? Was it in the right procedure or was it just an unreasonable action? Then was it the safety of others? Of course it's in the safety of others. It's the safety of all the cargoes on board, uh, on board the vessel. So thank you very much for your points. I'll, I'll move on to, I'm not, uh, this is going to be shared so everybody can see the CEO raised his hand. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, CEO, go ahead. Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. Yeah, good evening, Captain. Uh, I think uh, this uh, point that was raised regarding the general average, there are three criteria that have to be met for, for any laws to be considered to be general average. Yes, there was an emergency, but the other part of it has to be considered as well, was the attempt to save the situation successful. If it's not successful, I think according to the Yorkan 12 rule, it's not supposed to qualify to be a general average. That is my own submission. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, that was well noted. Um, partial loss is quite different from um, total loss uh, itself. So there is, there is partial loss and there is total um, loss of the vessel. In this case, we are where we lose one or two parts um, of the vessel to continue, I mean, to continue the maritime adventure and we got there safe and sound, then that is when the partial loss itself can be declared as a um, general, that's when partial loss can then be declared as, you know, a general average. But in the case where we are not able to do anything, that's when there is total loss. And in total loss, um, our general average is not discussed. The insurance company, the P and I, all our machinery come fully into place. So that is where the definition of general loss clearly states itself um, as well. Uh, CO is not understood. All right. With that one, we'll move into, let's pick another example. Um, 
cargo mistakenly falls overboard. Cargo mistakenly falls overboard. Is somebody wanna try this for me? I don't. I don't think. I don't think so. General average uh, is there because you said the cargo mistakenly fall overboard because one of the uh, prerequisite condition for general average is that it must be intentional. Mm. So at this point, you said mistakenly for fellow, but what? It must be intentional. Um, yes. Apart from it, must be intentional. What other factor? Voluntary and intentional. Yeah, voluntary and intentional. What other factor is it that disqualifies this example? It, it, from being... it must be done to save the other, uh, the ship and the other cargoes. But this one just mistakenly fell overboard. Yeah. It was not done to uh, save anything. Okay, so when we are talking about general if cargo, that one mistakenly has disqualified. <laughs> but but in a court of that law, one, yes, uh, now because that should be the fault of somebody that did not lash the cargo well. Mm, that that's well noted. But as a maritime lawyer as well, um, some will still prove this to you that it's still general average. But I. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you the general. I'm not going to agree the general average. But when you are stating this, if it's an exam, general average. If if is it is an exam, um, the situation, you say one. You have to state these five things. One, was the ship in peril? Was it an emergency? No. Two, was the act voluntary? No. Three. Was it reasonable for cargo to fall overboard? No. Then four, was it in the common safety of others? No. Extraordinary cargo falls overboard. If you want to fall, this is not just an extraordinary sacrifice um, that is carried out. So this five one, it has disqualified. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is when you are looking at the general average question and you're trying to explain general average, I want you to make sure that these five points are well noted in you discussing it. So now let's look at another one. There's delay of sailing due to the master being incapacitated. <laughs> Um, I'm seeing Sandra. Yeah. Sandra, if you are there, can you come in? You just help us out here and be our lawyer for today. Sandra, let me stop her. Okay. I'll open it to the class. Let's see. Let's see how that ideas. If the, the, the master um for one incapacitated. Incapacitated. When I mean incapacitated, maybe it's like Thank you. Him, Sir, to he cannot he cannot Sir, to you see, and then we uh, have to delay the sailing because there's no appropriate that master. word incapacitation to me it means emergency. Hmm. Which is part of uh, what qualify uh, and needs to be called general average. You know, here we are all lawyers, so we are trying to prove a point here. Incapacitation is an emergency. Okay, because um, it is JJ, not we need to understand just the capacity at that particular point. Um, JJ, we need to understand something which I'm trying to point out. For it to qualify for general average, yeah, I see you, I see you, Andres. Um, I, you um, I need you to ask, I mean, answer the question from the five points itself. So what are the five points? And does it qualify in these five points for it to be a general average, if that makes sense? Yes, that's what I'm putting that. So like, one, check the, is it so number one, three or number four? Is so it one, must be a period no, or, uh, it's not yes, going to be, one, that's the thing. It's not, it's not supposed to be all. It's not supposed to be three, just number three and four. It has to qualify on the five, if that makes sense. It has to qualify on one, two, three, four, ah, five. Yeah. So one. Was the ship in Peru? Is the ship in any emergency? Is the ship in any distress? No. Yeah, did you say no? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> two, 
was this a voluntary action for delay of selling? It's intentional. No. No, voluntary, intentional. It is, it is not voluntary. Yeah? It is not voluntary, but incapacitated. When you say incapacitated, does it mean that the master is sick or? Yeah, the master just cannot wake up. Let's just say it is. For some that. reason, medical reasons or, or whatever, the master is not able to take command. Yeah, see you, you can unmute yourself and um, chip in. Okay. Uh, from the five points that uh, uh, you mentioned earlier, this very point, the layer of failing due to master being incapacitated, if you ask me, it qualifies to be a general breach because it was an intentional at the delay was intentional and the, there was an emergency because the ship was on seaworthy to sail without a master and it was for the interest of all it was for the common interest of all so uh i believe this point right, yeah yeah see, see your, your, your point your points are interesting um i'm seeing many and coming your points are interesting but i needed to there are two more points eh? You said this was um, in distress. Um, you've mentioned it was in the safety of all and it was intentional. So two more points. Was it reasonable? Was it extraordinary? An extraordinary sacrifice? It, it was a reasonable sacrifice to delay the vessel from sailing at this uh, stipulated time so as to get it seaworthy before it continues. Was it an so, extraordinary sacrifice? Extraordinary. I, Yes, yes. If you look at it, it's extraordinary because ordinarily the ship could have sailed, uh, maybe uh, sailed with the chief officer, uh, taking command of the ship while they processed a waiver. But they had to make the extraordinary sacrifice, delay the ship for a couple of days to get a replacement, to meet the complement, the crew complement. Um, probably as per the, the safe manning requirement for the ship. So it was extraordinary. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just hear one more comment and then I'll declare um, who got this right. Uh, um, Lois, yes, please, you can go ahead. Good evening again. Good evening. Okay. Actually, a question based on what their point. I wanted to ask that. If the chief officer is available, why is he not capable of manning the vessel um, to the next ports? You know, because we, we are meant to understand that delivering of cargo at the right time safely, though, is the major aim of any ship, right? So if you're going to delay the cargo because the chief officer and uh, the captain is sick or incapacitated mm. and you're just few months to be or few years to be a captain as a chief officer why are you there so that's my that's my reasoning yeah um yeah thank you very much um mm -hmm. that's, that's so no, cargo, cargo is better than master <laughs> well <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's no, that's a very reasonable um, argument, um, to be honest, and that is when reasonable um, comes in. But me myself working in the office and uh, from my little experience of being in charge of um, seafarers and also for our on board, we also have the STCW, which we have to be very careful of. If the if the master is um, I mean if the vessel is to leave for instance Gibraltar and is sailing down to China, to for that to be the next port. And the chief officer itself, yeah, he might he might even be the best captain, but if he is not satisfied to take the master the vessel as a chief officer, that's a bridge on his own. Is a bridge of. Uh, flag state is a bridge of uh, STCW. It's also a bridge of the safe, minimum safe manning document, the SMD of the vessel as well. So we're also looking at it from another point. We, we promote the chief officer to so master. And then we want to promote the second officer to chief officer. 
I will promote the cadets to you keep promoting. Um, that's another argument for which is for another day. But my major argument would be is the chief officer is a um, professionally, I mean, I practically, can he sail the vessel? Satisfied, can he, is he satisfied to sail the vessel um, as well? So we also need to look at that for us not to jeopardize the maritime virtue. And CEO really rightly said it um, in, his, in his last um, statement. Now, of course, we can say we want to bring in the chief officer, I we want to sail the vessel as well. But as well, is safety being considered um, in the vessel because we are sailing with a crew shot. And we're sailing the crew shot, we're sailing especially with the most important person on board. And the new person you are putting on board, number one, like I said, can he act as the master? I've seen cases where chief officer cannot act as the master. They will tell you brandly, um, you're right there in my own previous companies and present companies, I cannot take the position yet. Also, my license cannot take this position. My license is just for chief officer. So all these things we put into um, today. Yeah, see you, just um, a quick one there. Uh, yes, sorry, I, I have to come in again. You know, the goal is always when this incapacitation happens uh, at the sea, then it's imperative that the mantle has fallen on the chief officer. And the goal will be to bring the ship safely to the next safe port where the ship can be made seaworthy again before the voyage can be continued. And the, to even be able to do that, the port state, the flag state, and the, every other parties have to be notified. And probably the flag state have to issue waiver for that particular position before it can happen. Because nothing just happens because anything can always happen along the line, even though it's just uh, offshore Nigeria. The documentation is always paramount. So if the chief officer actually is satisfied to occupy that position, then other consideration has to be made down the rank as the promotion is to be made. Otherwise, then the ship is already in a safe port and the safest thing to do is to keep the ship there until a qualified master comes on board before the ship can sail. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Thank you um, very much. I'm really glad that like, we all are having an understanding on the um, watch general um, average um, entails. So I'll just go to the last one, which is, of course, jettison of cargoes. And um, yeah, Sandra raised her hand. I would will, I will love to hear what you have to tell us. Hello, sir. Um, from the question, you said delay of sailing due to mass master being incapacitated. Now, uh, I want to get the question right. Is the, the ship is still at the port or the, sh the, the ship is on the way going to a port and the no. master falls in maybe. I want to know which, uh, which aspect because if the ship port and there has been a so the, the, the vessel has to be delayed because of they need to get a new master because even if the ship, even the, the chief officer are capable of stealing the ship to the next port to deliver the goods, they are still going to go bridge of the, the main uh, 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 rate of sailing the vessel. Now, but if the, if the vessel is at sea or the vessel is sailing, as happens to the captain, now the chief officer have every right to steal the ship to the next port and give reasons what happened to the master. But if the vessel is at the port and it is about to sail and the master is capacitated, the vessel has to be delayed till they get a new master to stay. Yeah, thank thank you very much. Um, and I really like the the, the conversation. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I really like the conversation. It, it shows you coming from, I will not be surprised to see you in a court of law, in a maritime law, um, making such cases. So this is where reasonable comes in as well. But in this example, I left it open for us to bring in different cases of if the vessel was sailing in or if the vessel was at anchor. But in this case, a yeah, delay of sailing um, was expected, I mean, 
was as, was assumed to be a delay of departure. So delay of departure from port, from one port to the other, trust me, it will bring financial strain on every major stakeholder um, on that um, on that vessel as well. So in this particular case, like I said, it's open. It's open up for conversations. It's open up to check. Was it reasonable? It's open up to check. Was it? Is it an emergency? Just like CEO said, and what like JJ tried to say, mm, it's not an emergency. This is when lawyers comes in as well. This is when average general average adjusters comes in. Was it reasonable? Was it for the safety um, of others? Was the vessel at anchor then supposed to come down to port, or was the vessel already safely at port and is proceeding down to another place? So in my own example, though, I mentioned that the vessel is in Gibraltar, port of Gibraltar, and is sailing down to China. So for, for instance, they will have to start putting in some other factors as well. As can the chief officer, is he certified to sell the vessel? Is he competent enough to sell the vessel? Can we entrust the chief officer? If we trust the chief officer, are we still gonna comply with the safe money document that requires we have another chief officer, we have another second officer um, as well. So all these dynamics are going to be put in place. But this is not a yes or no answer. Um, that board, the understanding of it will really help, will really help us in, in exams as well. So of course, freight as well will be affected. But now jettison of cargo and freight lost on the same um, on the same venture. Will it be a general venture or what? Does that mean general average? JJ. Ah, yeah, uh, big one. Uh, jettison of cargo. No, 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 uh, for, for, for the, the word jettison simply means that there's an emergency and it's meant to save the, 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 the old vessel or to save the larger cargo. So a uh, general average will still be, will be clear on that. To yeah. me, oh, to me. That's, that's and then um, virtual um, examples of everything. In fact, general average to take on every year. All right, thank you. General, we should take up everywhere. I don't understand. What did you say of general average? In all the examples, in fact, the one that I'm even concerned about is, uh, I mean, all the examples that is being laid down here, but the one I'm even concerned about is the fire and collision damage. If I cause a collision to other vessel and I damage other vessel, will the general average be, you know? So mm -hmm. that is the one I'm even concerned about, Seth. <laughs> no, like I said, um, Sandra will come and meet you and she will tell you what led, what allowed you to go and collide with the vessel. Was, <laughs> this, was, it, was it very long? She will be there and she will show us. And also CEO will come out and I know CEO, CEO likes the general average to declare it and then tells you reason. They tell you, yeah, it was an emergency and tell you it's voluntary. But these are, these are questions because fire, what caused the fire? What led to the fire is a peril, is an emergency. But the action in quenching this fire, it has led to, for instance, there's, a, there's an example here, damage to other cargo by water used for firefighting. There are those other cargo, and if this still results in a partial loss, those cargo will be compensated. I mean, the cargo owners will be compensated as well. But if it's a total loss, or if it's just a fire that has happened and it hasn't, and we, there was no damage to any cargo because we are fighting on it. But also, if there was damage to the ship itself and no cargo, I repeat, if there was damage to the ship itself and no cargo because we are fighting this fire, everybody in that sea adventure will pay, I mean, will contribute proportionally to, um, to the ship owner. So with that, I'll just keep moving on. This kind of general yes. pressure we are talking about, people ask, what kind of money? So the cost of entering and leaving ports, the port of refuge. So for instance, in this previous example, we might say, oh, the cap master is capacitated. Well, let's move to the nearest port. Are you following me? Let's move to the nearest port. Let's say you are moving for again from uh, Gibraltar to China. And for one reason, the master is not able. The chief officer can say, this, um, please, let's move to, down to the nearest port. Who pays for this, for this nearest port? That's when general average um, adjusts are coming. And then incidental storage um, charges as well. Then higher charges for crafts, I mean, lightening the vessels, 
that is when storage and salvage comes in, which would be another interesting topic that I would like to take um, another day. Let's say, for instance, in uh, the Suez Canal, what just um, what just happened? They have to, you know, rent. I mean, charter a dredger, to charter uh, whatever um, anchor and lean talk supply vessels. They have to charter so many um, make news in. I mean, even helicopters in order to see how they can really salvage that um, situation. So who pays? Now let them go and pay the is it one 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 billion um, dollars that they will pay. So this is where everybody you know um, comes in wages and maintenance of crew members for extra time um, um, as well. If for extra time they are be, they are being used, especially if you are working on um, role of ferries that is just a linear trade and they just have this fixed time and specific time and they are dealing with of course hours of breaks or some work six o'clock to five p.m in the evening and that's it on some companies that i do know here and my company also is part of them 5 a.m in the morning to 6 p.m i mean to 7 p.m and they go home but if there's some extra you know stuff that can result in general i mean that can result in peru or voluntary reasonable action also they will have to stay who pays them that remaining time that they stay if for instance it's a sea adventure everybody combines to pay that's when we have crew member so if, for instance, also you're being charged in the port, in short, short, um, short of de um, destination or loss, loss incurred, or they are being even sued because of. So it's not just a matter of oh, someone's cargo falls overboard. It's also a matter of even additional additional port charges um, as well. It's also a matter of oh, if I if I let go this cargo, we might. Have, I mean, if we, um, you know let's say we put some oil overboard just for the reason to help like let's say for a tanker for a tanker oh the vessel is going overboard for for some reason and then you start to get some from oil that would be a very very grave action where the master would think very well but it will result in charges if it results in charges who pays and all those things like that so yeah flag states the the ports can sue you and everybody and if it's a reasonable action a parole action everybody in that sea adventure uh, will come into into play as well. So, for instance, amounts to be made good in general average that I, mean, I used to say for the ship, it would be like um, reasonable cost of repair or replacement of some damage, especially if you say okay, you're fighting um, fire, especially if you are if you are grounded. We talked about uh, what do they call it. We talked about damages to ship anchors and to cables um, as well. That is for the ship owner. So what will these guys do? These guys as well, I mean, everybody on the vessel will be there to contribute towards it. Cargo, net arrival value. What time are we what time are we arriving? The freight, freight lost um, as well. I'm just trying to be fast because of our um our time. You know, so it's not just a matter of who lost cargo, but it's also a matter of even the ships or even the cargo, even the freight. And I will also need to um, consider as well. Then contributory, there are also contributory values, values to the ship, especially where the voyage ends and the cargo and the freight. Well, with all these things, um, there will also be ch salvage charges, but I'm not going to go into salvage charges right now because it will be another big topic that we're going to be discussing, which will be called storage and um, salvage next time. So we all these ones that I've just um, discussed now, does everybody know now where general average really, uh, really comes in? So the time general average when is explained, especially in our maritime law exam um, or in our orals, we can be able to express and give examples um, of as well of um, general average. I would like anyone with any doubts to um, clarify. Yeah, see you. Uh, th thank you, Captain, for the wonderful lecture. Uh, my uh, is actually a request. You know, you say so much about a uh, general average, but uh, there is this aspect of this uh, average adjustment that is always contradicting this uh, general adjustment, uh, which is particular average. Can you please help help uh, disseminate or just? Uh, 
explain the difference between this particular average and the general average for, for better understanding. Thank you. Yeah, so particular average is, is different from the general average. So we mentioned some, some cases there that does not qualify for general average. Unfortunately, those cases qualify for particular average. Are you following me? They qualify for particular. So particular average, if you are writing it down, is an accidental partial loss. A particular average is an accidental partial loss or insured of an, of an insured maritime property. So I come again, is a accidental partial loss of an insured maritime property. That's so for instance, um, there is damage to the ship all. So your damage to the ship all was not, um, does not qualify for general average, but that does not mean that you, the money comes from your pocket to replace it. That is where it says that it is for an insured maritime property. So who pays for the ship all? All our machinery. There is all our machinery insurance uh, policy. P and I also pays for others. But when it comes to all the all our machinery takes care of it. So let's say partial loss resulting from um, partial loss resulting from particular average, in summary, is what affects the party concerned. Are you following me? It affects only that party concerned. So I was talking about a dangerous goods um, in, a, in a container. It, that container itself has got no connection with any other. It destroys, it destroys, it does not, it does not affect the safety of the vessel. I'm just talking about just you, your own container alone inside the vessel. And I was talking about also mistakenly jettisoning of, of cargo. So that is why the owners of this cargo cannot, um, cannot be compensated from general average. Because why? This is a particular average. So God helped that owner to have insured that maritime property. And that is why the insurance is really very important as well. So what am I saying? If your own partial loss, and like I said, I keep saying partial loss because partial loss is different from total loss. So if your own, partial, if your own loss, which is a partial loss, does not affect every other person, does not qualify, let me put it that way, does not qualify for a general average, it is now called a particular, uh, particular average. So for instance, Collusion, I put there fire and damage collusion. Damage collusion is a particular average. Um, every weather damage, um, grounding, it's all particular um, um, average. And that's like say for instance, even fire, fire, on, fire on the vessel and it was not done, the fire did not come out of a result of, oh, it was voluntary. Nobody, nobody voluntary set the fire up. It was reasonable, nobody reasonably set the fire up. It was come up for the common safety of other who does that. So this it was an extraordinary sacrifice, no way. So this is what qualifies now for particular average. So can you see it now? General average is one peril, must be voluntary, must for the be for the safety um, of others, must be reasonable, must be an extraordinary sacrifice. The particular average. It just happened. No one, it was mistaken. It wasn't, it wasn't something that anybody um, did. But what qualifies it for be, to be particular average is it's an insured property. And that insurance comes only from, uh, from his insurance company. That are the people who will be able to, you know, um, repay the uh, maritime stakeholder. Is that understood? All right, um, so I, I trust that is understood now. 
Yes, yes, uh, you're clear. You're loud and clear, sir. That, that's you. good. Um, does anybody have any other question as regards to general average, particular average? All right, then. Um, I guess this was quite interesting. I would like to see on the group chats um, as well discussions, which, yeah, I would like to see on the group chats discussion if um, Evergreen, now happened in the Suez Canal, qualifies for a general average. Um, let's let's share our thoughts here. Yeah. Let, let's let's reason together as maritime lawyer. I'm sure Sandra, Sandra, and the um, CEO will be very interested in uh, in arguing that that sweet point. Yeah, Umar, you wanted to say something? Yes, sir. I want to understand um, the relationship between the shipmaster and the general uh, average adjusters. Like who, their role and responsibility, and what is the connection between the role of the master and the adjusters? Yeah, the the role of the of the general average adjuster um, comes into play when one um, there is to be a proportional sharing of the cargoes and everything. Then two, um, it's not its primary role, but also it's one of its secondary role to see how this also qualifies for, um, for a general average. So these are his two major roles that you will find also in the maritime uh, law, but majorly a general average adjuster comes into play to be able to proportionally share um, damages or proportionally share the loss with, for everyone um, as well. So it, is, the it, master, it, is not, it is not the master that does that. The master only declares the... the old, yeah, the master does not declare this is what if you get one million, this, this, that, that, that. Um, only the general average adjuster. The master does not have any business. The master only is to make a reasonable decision. I might not even be the master. Like I said, master might be incapacitated but the company makes the decision. So the, 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 the decision of what who pays who how much the master does not even know how much or this or that that goes on the master might just know okay manifest on the vessel this and that but you will not be able to to pinpoint that the master always says see i made a reasonable um decision my vessel was in distress it was reasonable it was voluntary and i did it for the safety of all and it's an extraordinary sacrifice i had to make so that himself he has just justified see I am declaring, I think this there should be a general average situation here because I just saved the vessel and this, that, that. And there's a partial loss of was well, some damage to the vessel or some damage to um, to a particular um, cargo or a particular um, stakeholder. There's a damage to a particular stakeholder in that sea adventure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Captain Tyre wanted to, yeah, Captain Tyre, sir. All right. Um, I, I think, uh, thanks, Captain Afawabi, and everybody that has chipped in. I like this um, topic, uh, maybe because I'm also interested in law. Uh, Captain Afawabi will know that. <laughs> and we, I like a little bit of uh, Wahala. All right, coughing it, actually. not um, Anyway, so you can see that in all this, it's very important to keep records, 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 records. Every, you need to prove this thing that it is what you say it is. Don't forget, not everybody's happy about um, paying this. My company has been uh, discussed with Kafarabi before. We've had to be part of um, something like this. And it's not funny, you know? People are there to dispute you. So your record keeping has to be very, very, very important. For the sake of the questions like this in oral, it's not really about you getting the right answer if it's yes or no. But the examiner wants to know that, do you know the test you will put this uh, scenario to? It's your opinion at the end of the day. That's why some people can see six and some people can see nine. You can say, no, it's not, because X, Y, is it one, two, three, four, five. You understand? Yeah, it, it, it might be, but because you've been able to say one, because the examiner doesn't know that you're not the judge, you're not the average uh, judge star. You know, you're not, you're not there, but he wants to know if you actually know the test to go through, all right? So it's not, the, don't try to get the answer, yes, it is this, without having a backup. The backup, your explanation is more important than your answer, because you'd be surprised what goes to court, 
and he was surprised uh, what the judge would say. You know, like we used to say, he shock you. <laughs> you know, so uh, please know the steps, the five steps. Try and remember them very, very well. All right. Uh, Captain Afalabi has given us assignment now. Is evergreen? Is it going to be a general average? Um, I think there's another interesting question that came up. Uh, that can you sail a ship without the master? Uh, I think we'll take it one by one. Eh? <laughs> we'll do the evergreen one first on the group. All right. So guys, uh, your answers, drop it there. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure. Uh, thanks to Sandra. Uh, you know, I know the ladies speaking. When they are talking, I'm excited. At least, yes, I know that uh, you know they're well represented. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm just gonna just share this so that in case anybody wanna write this down or um, make a note of it, but it's going to be in the in the group chat everywhere. Um, factors, like I said, if you don't take anything, take this home. The first GA versus it must be in peril, it must be voluntary, it must be reasonable, safety of others, and it must be for what? For extraordinary um, sacrifice. So, with that, I will say thanks to everybody. Thanks for coming, and I wish you all a lovely week. So, let's get, let's get the WhatsApp rolling and let's talk about Evergreen for any situation that you know um, you are thinking might be a GA or not a GA. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Captain Tayo. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah.